What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to kind of get outside of what we normally do here on the channel. We're going to talk about a subject that some of you guys might not know about. It's called automated finance, um, automated income, how to create passive income on the side from what you're already doing by kind of investing into your passions. And one of your passions might be drones. So that's cool if that is your passion and you want to pursue making money with that. Um, some people do turn their hobbies into their job. And for the past 22 years, I've turned the internet into my job in so many different ways than just one. And you know, they, they will tell you that successful people do more than just one thing and you just dive into all the subjects and you're continuously learning and I always stay curious about everything. So the big thing about my personality is that I wanna find out how things work and I love to tinker. I'm a tinkerer and most of you guys on this channel probably are because you're here and you're looking for information on drones. But today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite subjects is tech finance and how to create sort of automated income. I call it automated income and also type of another type of passive income by various different sources. And you can start small and you get that little snowball rolling. And if you really put passion and time into something, it can become something that finances pretty much your entire life. So um, you can turn your passions, your hobbies into your most loved and, and best job, your dream job for the next few decades. It all depends on you and how much time and effort and work you wanna put into it. So let's go ahead and get started today. And let's have some fun with tech finance. We're gonna talk about so many different things from crypto to NFTs, what are non-fungible tokens, what are metaverses and VR, and just uh, go, go ahead and just dive down the rabbit hole today. And maybe you're gonna learn something in this video that you didn't know before. So uh, I wanna share my successes with you and just maybe spark something there with you that might inspire you to next career. So let's go ahead and get started with the first of many subjects for automated income or passive income. Here we go. Now some of my first tips are just going to kind of be tips from some of my favorite guys out there um, and, and there are some quotes from people like Warren Buffett or John McAfee. Um, John McAfee is now passed away. He died in jail and he's definitely not somebody that I look up to, but I do take some of the things that he says about internet and crypto and security pretty seriously because um, he's been on the forefront for the last, I mean, three or four decades, it seems like, with the top level uh, security software on PCs. And um, PCs are not all that secure by any means. But uh, one of my favorite quotes by John McAfee, just going to go ahead and put this up on the screen here so you can see it, is talking about crypto. Uh, Bitcoin generally is a great idea. Keeping wallets on smartphones is the worst idea of decade, John McAfee. Yeah, that is true. Um, you don't want to keep your crypto wallet on your smartphone. Now, what is a crypto wallet uh, yeah well uh, if you don't know what a crypto wallet is it is essentially it's a little piece of software that holds your Bitcoin or other coins that you can get on these different marketplaces there are tons of marketplaces out there um, you can do KuCoin you can do um, uh, Coinbase or a Coinbase Pro you can do you can even trade coins and try to make sort of uh, one to two to three percent profits say you do four or five trades a day and that makes you enough say supplemental income for the afternoon you can quit and go swimming for the rest of the day um, and some people do that but you have to have enough money in that account to be able to make a profit off of say one to two percent trades i mean two percent at the max for a single day with um, the highs and lows of bitcoin because it is a liquid market it's going up and down all the time well so what people do is they sell on the high and they buy on the low. So if you have $10,000, 1% 10 of $10,000 is gonna earn you what? It's gonna be you know, around $100 or so per trade. So um, the more money you have in that account, the better. Some people do start out with $100 and some people start out with say like $500 or $1,000 and they turn that into $5,000, but you kind of have to know what you're doing there with that. Uh, money and you don't want to just drop five thousand dollars into an account for your first go round and start trading and lose say five thousand dollars it is it's it is possible to to drop that much money and lose that much money i know people who have made bad trades and lost like seventy thousand dollars so you want to be very careful in the way that you invest 
in these online ventures, projects, NFTs, crypto coins, whatever, altcoins, stablecoin, you want to be super careful. Um, Warren Buffett says rule number one of investing is never lose money. Rule number two, never forget to <laughs> rule number one. So uh, never lose money in your investments. Trade smart, be smart, invest smart, don't lose money um, because I myself have lost money in investing already. I dropped some money into one of my first stocks ever and it it I think it lost around 80 to 90 percent overnight so um, I watched five hundred dollars turn into about oh, 60 to 70 dollars so completely lost my ass on that one and um, lesson learned there was an article that came out the stock went super high and I was like oh yeah yeah that's a great great investment and then I'm like I'll throw some money at that and then I would just watch the numbers just do this, go straight down into the gutter. So uh, lesson learned, don't jump in on hype and don't be a victim of FOMO. So what is FOMO? Fear missing out. So don't like hop in on something that you think is hot right in the, the, the heat of the moment without looking back at what it was doing previously. Go back and look what it was doing a year ago, six months ago. Is it a brand new project? Did it just pop? Um, so you want to be careful about that when you're putting money into anything that's brand new. Most people are putting things into things called stable coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum. They seem to be the most um, stable out there as far as, as far as trading goes. They they do have a sort of a consistent. Right now, Bitcoin is right at around thirty eight thousand to forty one thousand in the past two to three days, and it you know it has some highs and lows, but it's not dropping drastically down to say fifteen thousand uh, dollars overnight. So you're not going to lose everything overnight, but we're going to talk about trading for a moment, and we're going to talk about how to do it strategically without losing a ton of money while you sleep. And you can use websites like tradingview.com and that will help you see a little more like market analytics about how the coins are actually doing. And this crazy chart right here is based on Japanese candles. These little candles right here go up and down. And in the olden days, these candles represented the price of rice and depending on how long they burn or whatever. And this would, this would dictate the price of rice and they use these candles to go as they were going up and down and they, they that was how they, they understood market volatility. So um, the market is liquid, it does go up and down. In this bottom graph down here and I'm pointing out right here, this is the MACD graph and there are two bars here and these bars go up and down over time and they sort of help you predict what's gonna happen next with these candles. So if you look at this MACD program right down here, this is showing me that right now, this green bar right here is kind of trending in the upwards. So this is the good stuff right here. And this one down here, this was in the red. Um, so when these bars are further apart, that means that the green bar has more juice and is more volatile. It's on the way up and it's looking good. And if I scroll back right here, right now, Bitcoin is kind of climbing a hill. So this would be a good point for most traders at a certain point here before it takes another dive down to the bottom to go ahead and sell out back to USD. So at this point, it is climbing the hill. This candle at the very end right here is green and now it's red. You can see it dip up and down. And when these two get close together and they come close together again and they pass point, you can see where they kind of converge here. If they converge, that's usually a point where people are going to buy or sell um, depending on which way this green arrow is going. So this green line, this is what you want to look at for what's trending in the positive. And that's that's what you want to see is that things are going up, not down. Um, you also get a live view right here with this red bar. This is $39,762.31 right currently. And it looks like it's trending up. So you could wait it out as well. Say you had your Bitcoin and you're just waiting and you're watching your numbers go up and up and up. And that's great. But all of a sudden you see a sharp decline and a huge descent. You see a red candle just start to drop all the way down. And I've seen this. I saw it last night. Um, I, I watched it just have a huge dive. We go back here. You'll see a few kind of valleys in here. This is a valley right here where it just it just I went straight down to the gutter. And if you're riding your Bitcoin at that point, and you have your Bitcoin in, in this section right here, it's a good thing to wait it out till it gets back up to here and then sell. Because you know, if you if you sell right about this point and you say you're negative if a half percent or a whole percent or whatever, you're gonna lose money. So that's one thing you want to look out for. Make sure that you wait it out 
um, it's kind of hard, especially in the middle of the night, if you're, you're sitting there, you don't want to go to sleep. Um, you can also do another type of trade, which will put a limit on things. If it goes below a certain point, sell. If it goes up, up to a certain point, go ahead and sell. So it depends on um, the type of trade you want to do. There's about 10 different types of trades you can do. Um, there's a, a ton of stuff you can learn in crypto trading. Uh, but enough about crypto trading because not everybody's going to do that. Some people like to just buy a big giant block of crypto and let it sit um, and they hold on for dear life. We call that holdle. I'm not really a big fan of holdle because I feel like you can make $1,000 today, tomorrow you can lose $1,000, and then the next day you can lose $6,000. Um, so yeah, just just hoping that Bitcoin is going to eventually reach $100,000 in the next three months is, is kind of a, a crazy idea. So um, even though it is like the next big thing, sort of world currency that that supposedly no governments can touch, uh, it, it's, yeah, they can touch it by the way, and, and you're gonna be taxed on all of these. There will be capital gains by the way. So uh, Uncle Sam is gonna get their share of your Bitcoin. There's also, there's programs where you can export a, a CSV file to give to your accountant and show your income over the year of trading. So if you are trading, it isn't a capital gain. Uh, but let's go ahead over to my favorite website for tracking coins, and that is CoinMarketCap. This is cool because if you click on cryptocurrency right here, it'll take you to the page for what's trending today, um, the biggest gainers, recently added coins. If you wanna get in on a brand new coin, sometimes you can find the most volatility and the most risk on brand new coins. The biggest gainers are fun to look at too because this might show you a new project that's popping. You can come over here, say Meta Cyber, what's that? I'm gonna click on that and you can learn about it and go to the official website through the CoinMarketCap website. And this is crucial because you don't really wanna go and search on Google and get on a fake website of this company. Uh, there are hackers out there who create websites to look like, say, Coinbase, for example. Uh, or some type of crypto wallet like MetaMask, and then you log into something that is not actually MetaMask, and it's someone trying to get your information. So be, care be careful on what websites you connect your crypto wallet to. Uh, this is their MetaCyberland.io. A lot of these decentralized companies have IO at the end of their website, um, not just .com. Some of them do have .com, but the big new trend right now is IO at the end of it. And this is Meta Cyber. It's a new metaverse that's gonna pop. They have their own coin, and apparently it's doing pretty well. The press is pretty good. The hype is pretty good on this one, and apparently it's gonna have game controller support, and it's gonna have NFTs, and also virtual reality if you want. Um, and it looks like eventually it will work on the Mac and the PC. That's kind of cool. You can check out the tokenomics. It's really important to read their white paper. Um, that's essentially the roadmap and, and the, the idea behind the company where they wanna go in the next few years. And they'll show you quarter by quarter what their goals are. And don't just jump in on a lot of these projects and dump a ton of your money. If you're brand new into this and you have a bunch of money, I don't recommend dropping like, you know, say uh, 25 grand into a, a brand new project that just came out that seems like a cool idea, a cool, you know, uh, lucrative investment. You really wanna be careful with these projects and, and make sure that they're really in it for the long run and they're not just trying to gain capital and then dip. Um, there is a thing called a rug pull, so you have to be very careful about that. Um, but with that said, this is a great website to go through and find new coins. Um, some of my favorites out there are apes, um, and that's the Big Ape Yacht Club or the uh, Board Ape Yacht Club, and they're they're one of the biggest and largest NFT collections out there right now. I'm um, doing the best, and their their NFT is so expensive right now. They're around three hundred thousand dollars for a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT on OpenSea. This is the main NFT trading site uh, where most of the projects are listed. Uh, the, the Board Ape Yacht Club is so expensive right now that people like uh, Eminem and Jimmy Fallon, um, are the, and you know Paris Hilton are the people that can afford Board Ape Yacht Club. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars for um, an NFT is a ton of money. So they're trying to come out with these like secondary collections, you know, second and third collections, a little bit cheaper that sort of everybody can get their hands on a Board Ape Yacht Club. 
NFT. So the next thing they did was they created their own coin. They also have their own metaverse coming out, hopefully by the end of April. And that metaverse is going to run on ape coin. So now everybody can get their hands on some type of ape. And if you want a little bit of ape coin, it's probably not a bad idea to get it because over the last month or so, it started out um, kind of low, around a dollar, and it went all the way up to around um, $16 in the last couple of days. And every time a new news article comes out, the price kind of pumps. And this is a project that's not really a pump and dump um, because the sentiment behind this metaverse coming out and their NFTs is just globally a, a phenomenon. One of the biggest phenomenons on the internet right now is the Bored Ape Yacht Club. So um, investing in a little bit of ape coin, you know, a thousand dollars into this, and this is not investment advice in this video because I'm not allowed to give you any investment advice because I'm not uh, able to do that according to the SEC. So um, the other one that's really big right now is Gary V's V Friends Series 2. This is the second series of V Friends. His first one kind of looked like a bunch of doodles and he made like um, over 50 million or something like that. And now he's back again and the floor price is still kind of affordable, uh, 1.39 Ethereum. And if you go to a, a Ethereum converter, if we look um, at Let's see, let's convert 1.39 to USD. Um, that's that's a lot of money. Uh, just 0 0.1 right there is $295, um, 0.139. And we're looking at $4,000 already for Gary Vee's second entry level price for an NFT. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, that's a floor price. It was much quicker, much, much, much lower than that like a week ago. So these things go up and down and they fluctuate in price. So um, you can check the activity and you can see that, you know, this has been going up and down in the sales and you can track how many sales right now. Currently on April 22nd, looks like the average price is 1.38 Ethereum and the volume is 1,125. Um, number of sales, 815 sales. That's a lot of sales for um, 1.39 Ethereum and Right now, if you click on, say, uh, buy now, let's just filter this over to buy now. And that will give you um, an idea. I guess I'm not logged in, so um, I can't do that. But this is usually a buy now price. And this one just sold uh, for $4,200. And right now, the highest offer sold on the next go round of this is at 2100 I mean, this is crazy. And people say, oh, my God, I would never pay $4,000 for a JPEG. But technically, guys, you're not paying $4,000 for a JPEG. You're paying $4,000 for that digital contract on the blockchain. It is a digital ledger that can be sold and traded only on the blockchain between a registered user of a marketplace. So you have to have also a wallet that you can put that NFT into after you buy it. So you have to be in Coinbase or you have to be in one of these other uh, types of wallets to hold your NFTs. Uh, or, or in some type of game that allows NFTs. Um, so that is sort of like a, a certificate of authenticity. Kind of like when you go into a baseball card shop back in the 80s and you bought a baseball card and they give you a letter with a signed letter of authenticity. So that's a uh, proof of ownership and that gives you legal right to that image. It's not the JPEG that you really own, honestly. It's, uh, it's, it's unless the artist says that you have rights to reproduce it and sell it on t-shirts and whatnot. But Board Ape Club, by the way, Board Ape Yacht Club, decided that people are not allowed to resell their images. So um, the Board Apes are still going to be owned by them. So let's just type in Board Ape Yacht Club here on OpenSea. And let's go look at their current collection. And this is insane because their floor price is 127.99 ETH. That is a lot of coin, you guys. That is around $300,000. Let's just convert that real quick. See, 127.99, $378,000 for a board ape. And that's at the floor price. That is not even the rare ones. Um, and this is pretty wild. If, if I spent that much money on an image that an artist created, I might have to like print it out and, and frame it in my house, at least until I sold it. Um, maybe I just leave it there for all time. 
Uh, but these are really popping right now and most people can't afford them. So that's why they came back and they're releasing the metaverse coming soon for everybody to play and get in on. Um, what's big about the metaverse is that inside the metaverse, you will be able to make money, sell things. You can sell digital assets, which I've done before in other um, types of metaverses. But there are tons of metaverses out there. So if you're looking at getting into metaverses, Illuvium is probably one of the biggest, most lucrative projects that's coming up. And what what is Alluvium? Alluvium is essentially, say, Warcraft, but you can battle for Ethereum. Um, it's kind of wild. You have these head-to-head -head battles inside Alluvium, and it is, it is a really nice-looking game. It's one of the nicest-looking games out there um, in par with something like a PlayStation game. Um, it is really, really beautiful the way this is made. Um, this one is going to be really, really huge. But I, I have a problem. I can't play these type of games. I've played around with Axie Infinity. And Axie Infinity is a little bit like Pokemon. But they kind of stress me out. And I'm not even losing any money yet on these games. Um, there are strategy games. You have to have um, certain type of spells, different cards to drop. And it just becomes very complicated for my brain to really have fun with. So, um, but Alluvium to me looks like one of the best out there and one of the coolest looking ones out there. If you're, if you're into games like this and you just want to have fun and you're not really wanting to invest a ton of money into it, that's probably fine. But you know what the problem with some of these games is, this is the problem that I, that I find with Axie Infinity. If you just go in there and use the, the three that they give you to start, they give you three for free. And the problem with that is, is they're not very good. And people will come in there and they will just kind of murder you. Um, you have no defense against anyone that has any type of expensive Axie Infinity NFT. And all the Axie Infinity characters will be NFTs as well as all the ones you see here on the screen. Each one of these are NFTs in this metaverse. So this is pretty wild stuff for the next 10 years. Play to earn games are going to be huge. Um, uh, but again, I, I find this type of um, monetized gameplay to be a little bit stressful because I really do hate to lose money and I, I like a little more stable investment. Uh, but if you have some money to play around with, why not? Um, if you have an extra, you know, a few thousand dollars sitting around, you don't care about just burning up, um, go ahead and hop into a metaverse and start having a digital battle. Uh, but for me, I'm going to skip that. Um, but I think the game looks super cool. And you will also be able to buy land in here. You can go ahead and you can stake early before the game launch, which means you'll earn a great APR on whatever type of investment you put in there. Say you drop $10,000, you're going to get certainly a high APR on returns um, once the game launches. And you have to hold those throughout the process or the term of the game. Um, until the next version of it comes out, I believe, before you can claim um, or cash out those rewards. But you will get high rewards and gains on staking in certain games out there in, in Metaverse land. So uh, Alluvium, again, looks like one of the best for me. And the price right now is $522.87 versus the ApeCoin at $14.75. So that gives you kind of a big... Uh, uh, that's a that's a big picture between two different popular games in metaverse right now. Um, the ape metaverse is going to be pretty big. They're going to sell land in that one as well, and NFTs are going to be in there um, from I, I believe from multiple different collections for the ape metaverse, which would be fun. But um, yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell what's going on right now. There's other games like Sandbox you can get into. It's kind of like a um, sort of a, a, a Minecraft type of game for adults. Snoop Dogg is the big guy in there, and, and he's really established into the NFT and the crypto scene. He's kind of the godfather all over again, and everybody respects Snoop Dogg. Um, huge investor in, in crypto and NFTs and metaverse. So Axie Infinity as well. This is their website. Check them out, axieinfinity.com. They also have Marketplace where you can buy the axes for playing the game and again if you buy a cheap one you're going to get your butt smeared um these ones that are in here for 14 or 15 dollars don't even bother to buy those because you'll just get your ass kicked all day long invest a little bit more money if you want to have a little bit of a fighting chance 
up against the other um, axes because uh, there are guys out there right now that are like a level six that would just kick your butt. Um, and, and the game is just, you know, for, for me, it's just getting started and, and I'm not really a big fan of this one. Um, I, I know a lot of people love this one, but uh, it just honestly, it just pisses me off because I just keep getting my butt kicked in there and I'm, I'm not even registered to to make any money in Axie Infinity. So uh, I, I find Sandbox to be a little more fun and uh, easy gameplay. And that one's um, a little less stressful because some of the games in there are just, just a lot more fun. Um, and Sandbox right now is, is uh, out of the second season and they're gonna have a third season coming up soon, hopefully. But um, you, can, you can log in there for free and just tool around and uh, <laughs> play around in that one but the, the the scary thing also about some of this is that it, things can be hacked you know uh, right now Axie Infinity is just getting back on their legs with some investors bringing capital back to the game when they were first launching their season two they got hacked for 620 million dollars and come to find out it was North Korea hacking them and they only seems like they only got back Binance says they only got back 5.8 million out of 620 million. Where's the rest of the money at? Um, so <laughs> that's uh, that's a that's a huge risk. But most of the people that lost money had some investors come in and um, refund their accounts. So that's good news for people who dropped, say, you know, ten thousand dollars into Axie Infinity. That would totally suck if you woke up the next morning and your money was gone and North Korea stole all your shit. So. Um, you have to be careful on the projects. Even the most biggest projects can be hacked out there. So um, when you're on the internet, you have to be smart. Don't be dumb and don't get hacked. Um, but right now, again, it looks like we're in a dip on the Bitcoin side of things. And it really doesn't matter how much it dips if you're trading um, because the dips allow you to buy in cheaper and sell out on the next top of the hill. And right now it looks like a, a good buy point at the bottom of this when it gets all the way to the bottom and this starts trending upwards again and it right now you can tell by this MACD right here that it's really not coming up much at all so um, it's it's on a steep decline and it looks like 39,436 um, so yeah the market's liquid and it's volatile and um, to, to learn this the way this works you really have to just you know, do your own dil due diligence and do your research. And if this is something that you have fun with and that you enjoy and you, you, you enjoy numbers and you, you like figuring out how things work, this is a, a great um, sort of uh, wormhole that you can go down. There are tons of different directions you can go with this. And uh, NFTs, crypto, coins, stable coins, altcoins, marketplaces, uh, trading, so much fun. Uh, but you have to be careful and don't lose money, um, as Warren Buffett says. Number one rule of investing is don't lose money. So um, be very careful, guys. If you have some questions, put them down below. Um, if you're interested in this metaverse or that metaverse, let me know. I'd love to know about one that maybe I don't know about. Share with me. Um, also, make a comment about any type of crypto coins that you like recently, and uh, we can just have some fun talking about tech finance on the channel as well. So uh, I will bring you some more subjects coming up and I will keep you up to date on um, what new projects are coming out and what might be fun for you to check out. So uh, aside from drones, we can also have some fun with other tech on the channel. Guys, I appreciate you watching as always. Please do subscribe. I'm Justin Davis and I will definitely see you on the next one, guys. Take care. Have a good weekend. I'll see you on the next one.